my stoop in particular was a crack emporium where uh, people sat and sold crack. And there would be a parade of cars looking for prostitutes. Criminal trespass or trespassing in parks, uh, little small thefts of food, beer, things like that. Quality of life crime, so that's public intoxication, um, prostitution, disorderly conduct. A high rate of drug addiction, mental health issues, under no employment. Persons with misdemeanors usually have a social, psychiatric, or drug problem that normally would not be addressed. Now we're talking to people that often complained about a lot in the community, disorderly persons and other things, but often when they get into the court system, they're just given a fine or time served and just sent right back out. Now that's not solving any problems. The problems that, that we have confronted for so many years are that the same people come into our courts again and again and again with the same problem and no one solves their problem. In the early 1990s, Times Square was in crisis. The crossroads of the world had developed a reputation for drugs, crime, and disorder. A group of civic leaders decided to do something about it. The result was the Midtown Community Court. Our partnership with the Midtown Community Court started in the early 90s when there were a whole bunch of quality of life problems that just weren't being solved by normal means and so there was a need for creativity and innovation and partnership. The Midtown Community Court was a neighborhood-based court that sentenced low-level offenders to perform very visible community restitution out in the neighborhoods, paying back the communities that they had harmed through their criminal behavior. And at the same time, linking people not only to punishment, but also to the kind of services, be it drug treatment, job training, mental health counseling, that might, with a little bit of luck, stop them from coming back again and again as criminal recidivists. Researchers documented that this new approach worked, reducing the use of jail and improving public trust in justice. The impact on the streets was profound. Street prostitution declined by 56%, illegal vending dropped by 24%. These kinds of results attracted national attention. The Bureau of Justice Assistance in the early 90s recognized uh, the innovation of the Midtown Community Court and we worked with people in New York and at the Center for Court Innovation to promote other experiments around the U.S. The community court in, in Portland, Oregon, it was born after uh, a couple of people reported back about what was going on in Midtown Manhattan. I have thought this could solve some of the problems that we were facing uh, in Portland and uh, we were very successful. Community court is much more than a court that's located in the community. It is bringing the community into the court. While each of the community courts that has followed in Midtown's wake is unique, they all share some common values. Revitalizing the relationship between government and local residents is a key goal. The San Francisco Community Justice Center was the first project that actually asked the community what they felt about the court system. Every month we invite members of our community into the court to discuss public safety issues and hot spots. Um, law enforcement, prosecutors, defense lawyers, business community, residential community, all sitting at one table with the judge and myself um, to problem solve and sort of stay on top of what's happening in the neighborhood. Community courts seek to pay back neighborhoods that have been undermined by chronic offending. What we're trying to do is change sentencing practice. We're trying to drastically reduce the use of jail as a response to low-level crime, but also reduce the number of cases in which people walk out of court with no sanction whatsoever for their criminal behavior. Well, we're finding that there's a population that doesn't need to be incarcerated. Uh, but they need to be held accountable in some fashion. Community court is a wonderful way to do it. And many times these people don't have the ability to pay a fine. Instead, they can do community service and they give them an opportunity to give back to the community. 
as you can see what we're doing here is going to make this neighborhood look really good and so you've done something for the community and also you've also done something to take care of your uh, your citations actually I enjoyed myself today and I think this is an excellent job for us to be you know in the community to do the right thing community courts use social services to craft individualized sanctions drug addicts are linked to drug treatment Homeless individuals are linked to housing providers. With the help of local partners, community courts offer job training, high school equivalency classes, and counseling as well. The goal is simple, to give defendants the structure and support they need to stop offending. We start off with immediate assessment at the court to figure out what's going on in their lives, what issues they need to address. It's not always about putting them in jail. Uh, we run into many of these violators over and over again, and we would like to see some long-term solution because it helps the police as well as the neighborhood. You really can kind of get to the root of a problem as opposed to jail, and prison, and probation. We're talking about treatment, um, counseling, rehab. Any litigant coming into a court uh, shouldn't just be treated as a, a case, a legal case, but that it's a person um, and that the person's problems and issues, uh, not just the legal situation, need to be addressed as part of the court uh, process. I want you to do with conditions of release, job readiness, the life choices group, and the marijuana group. Whereas downtown I only have jail or out, here I have a number of different tools to use to get to that person's problem so that they don't come back in front of me again. The South Dallas Community Court is located in the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center. So instead of bringing all those services downtown, why not just bring the community court right to where the services were already located? That way our defendants get all the services and everything they need right here. We have to hold people accountable for their actions, but also being able to provide them with some underlying assistance so that we don't continue to see them, so as opposed to just sending someone off with a fine or 30 days in jail, and on the 31st day, they're still a drug addict. I definitely do not think it's soft on crime. I think it's being the smartest on crime. They're smart, smarter, and smartest. The smartest law enforcement agencies attend to the social service needs of many of people that live there that might be playing out symptoms of mental health, symptoms of drug addiction. I was arrested eight times, and the last time I had to do three days of community service. And that's where I started my journey. I look at this picture and I say to myself, yeah, I look at it myself, <laughs> oh wow. This was the old Susan. This is the real, this is the real Susan. You know, they make you feel like a person. Respect, you know. I, I can say that. I can really say respect. I think that community courts help to do five things. They reduce crime. They streamline the justice system. They actually change sentencing practices, solve individual problems, and certainly increase public trust in the criminal justice system. We've seen the principles and practices that Midtown embodies, a deeper engagement with social service providers, combining punishment and help, using data in different ways to measure the outcomes of court cases, really infiltrate the criminal justice system broadly. Well, I, I think no one who looks at the data or the neighborhood about uh, relating to the Midtown Community Court can conclude anything other than this has been a real success. I'm very proud of the community courts that we have here in Dallas. When we get someone who can actually use the services to turn their life around, gives us a huge win in terms of making productive citizens of people who really didn't have an opportunity to do that before. And I see what community courts have done in other communities, other societies, uh, other places uh, around the country. And to me, I'm just encouraged by it, that it is ultimately cutting costs. It is ultimately uh, liberating uh, police officers from having to deal with the same people over and over and over again. Community courts and their guiding principles have spread far and wide, including projects in Australia, Canada, and England. It's a new way of approaching what we do, so I give it the highest grades because it, it's, it's a total uh, 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 sea change in terms of how the courts of the state of New York uh, do our, our role, our constitutional role.
innovation based on solid evidence, reducing both crime and incarceration, and enhancing the public image of justice. These are the legacies of community courts across the United States and around the world. You do not see prostitutes patrolling the sidewalks in front of children. You do not see sexual acts in cars like you used to see. It's a safe neighborhood. It's day and night. I think if the court had not moved into this area when they did, we would not be where we are today.